Beach season is here. Time to re-educate yourself, though, about the dangers of the sun. Here with tips on keeping your skin safe is Dr. Alan Kling. He is board-certified dermatologist with a practice right here in New York City. Good morning to you, Dr. Kling. Good morning. Well, people are thinking right now about slathering on the sunscreen and bronzing up for the summertime, but you're here to say that there's no such thing as even a safe tan, right? There is no such thing as a safe tan. A tan, by definition, means that you're already damaged the sun. And what this a tan is, is your body's own self-defense uh, self mechanism to protect itself against further sun damage. Let's talk a little bit about cloudy days, because I think there's a perception sometimes that you can't get any sun through the clouds, but you say that it's actually more dangerous than the sun sometimes. You can burn when it's sunny, you can burn when it's cloudy. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why it might be a little deceptive when it's burning, when you're out in the sun in, when I'm doing a cloudy day, is during cloudy day, it's not as hot, and people tend to spend more time in the sun, and they tend to get more sun exposure, and they burn. Also also, things like high altitudes and winds can also increase your chance of burning. The SPF factor, we hear about that a lot. It actually means sun protection factor. But what should we know about that when we're going to the store to buy our sunscreen? Sun protection factor tells you how much protection you have against the sun. A person burns usually in 10 minutes if you have an SPF of 2. It means you can go out for 20 minutes. If you have an SPF of 15, over two and a half hours. Okay, let's move on to some of our examples because we have lots of different sunscreens here. I want to start with the Clinique 25 SPF. Now, you call this one a physical blocker. What does that mean? It's a physical blocker. This one contains um, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, and those things physically block the rays of the sun from getting to your skin. And UVA versus UVP. That's right. UVB is the rays of the sun, the ultraviolet light B, which causes sunburn and skin cancer. UVA are the rays of the sun which cause premature aging, so-called photoaging. That's the brown spots, wrinkles, leathery skin. And those are both bad, obviously. They're both bad, and it's very important that all sunscreens have protection against both UVA and UVB. And this particular sunscreen here has protection against UVA and UVB, and the UVA protection is something called Parcel 1789, which is very effective. And that's very technical, but can people actually see that as an ingredient if they go to the store? It's, on, it's on the label. Okay. Move on to Banana Boat SPF 15. This is a good sunscreen. It has UVA, UVB protection, but the one thing, it does not have Parcel 1789, which is the best photo-aging UVA protection that's currently available. Okay, and finally, our Copper Tone SPF 4. Now, I know you're going to tell me, Doctor, that this is not a good one, right? Even this though I would probably gravitate towards this one. Copper Tone's a good brand, but nobody should be using a 4. It should be off the market. It does not give you adequate sun protection. 20 to 30 minutes, you say, that people should put on their sunscreen before they go out in the sun. You know, when you think of people on the beach, they're, they're putting it on while they're already out there. But you say you need this extra time before. Why? Hopefully, you should be reapplying at that time. It takes 20 to 30 minutes for the body, for this, to the sunscreen to effectively bind. So you should apply at least 20, 30 minutes before you initially go out. And also, how often should people reapply then if they get in the water or they're laying there and they're sweating a lot? What should you, they do? You should reapply the sunscreen at least every two hours. If it's hot, you're involved in any athletic activity, you're sweating, you should probably apply it every hour, hour and a half, and certainly all the time after you go into the, after, after you get out of the water, even though most of these sunscreens say they're waterproof or water resistant. Let's move on to clothes, because I know that uh, clothes have an SPF factor on their own, but I was surprised to hear how much, like, jeans have 15, but let's start with tightly woven fabrics, because there are different kinds of shirts. What does tightly woven fabric mean? Any type of tightly woven fabric will give you better sun protection, because if it has a, a tighter weave, it's a better protection against the sun's rays and penetrating to the skin. Synthetic fibers? Synthetic fibers, polyesters, dacron, lycron, they're much, they're much more, the weave is much tighter, and it gives you better protection. And finally, dark fabric. I know that will make you hotter, but you say it's better with regard dark to the sun. Dark fabric absorbs the sun much, much better, even though it's uncomfortable over long periods of time. And if somebody does get sunburned, you recommend aspirin and aloe. Why the aspirin? Aspirin gets to the root of the problem, decreases the sunburn. Aloe is much, much more soothing. But everybody should get into the habit of using a sunscreen as part of their routine basis, just like showering or brushing your teeth, and then sunburns would not happen. Slather on the sunscreen. Thank you so much, Dr. Kling, for being here this morning. Thank you. Coming up next, family counselor Mike Riera has advice on what to do if a kid is a little too computer savvy. You're watching the Saturday Early Show on CBS.